so today we are going to talk about uh, something technical uh, about the how to manage and to access and query uh, databases from your Python applications uh, the, the idea would be you can imagine the to-do list application that you are being uh, developing in the labs uh, the main problem is that uh, the information about this uh, uh, list uh, is just stored in memory and uh, there is no way currently to uh, let the list of items survive when you close the application and run it again so, so we need to have some way of uh, managing persistent data data that can still exist even when the application is stopped and run again and so on and also a way of managing uh, big amounts of data which is not uh, probably uh, where, where it's not probably possible to hold uh, everything in memory. So the idea uh, is that uh, uh, we need some tools uh, to make our data persistent uh, and uh, give us the capability of managing uh, even uh, large amounts of data. And at the same time, at least for those of you who already had uh, a course in databases, uh, you know that uh, the SQL language that is used to query relational databases is actually very powerful and so it can solve you a lot of problems so instead of uh, creating your own complex data structure with uh, lists and dictionaries and sets uh, in Python and then when you need some information you need to navigate these lists uh, so you have a lot of code to write and check uh, uh, the information you want you can you could use uh, a, a SQL query and uh, ask the database uh, to find uh, to join and to cross the tables uh, uh, and to filter the information that you actually need mm? so for persistence for scalability and also for let's say uh, the algorithmic cap capabilities uh, of a database uh, to be able to find data when you need this so uh, what do we want to achieve uh, is uh, being able to connect our Python application mm, that could be for now a standalone Python application and then next week we start uh, to learn how to create a web Python application mm. and we know we want to connect it uh, to a database server and practically the kind of database server that we are using in this course uh, is uh, either MySQL or Mari MariaDB mm that are two open source uh, uh, databases uh, that are very let's say uh, popular in the in, in the linux world and very lightweight but at the same time quite powerful so uh, this is one scenario we'll we'll tell a bit more about these databases in a second what happens is that your python application is one program one process in linux uh, and uh, the database server is another process separate process that starts usually when the system starts up and the database server uh, will manage one or more databases at the machine level at the operating system level so we have a, a service uh, um, and a separate server which runs as a service in your system and that hosts data just to show you an example in this computer we installed uh, some time ago the Mar MariaDB server and you see in the window services win uh, say applet uh, you see that in the long list of services that are started in the operating system we have one that is called mysql and is running so actually for all this time on this computer a database were, was already running and we didn't see it we didn't notice it because database usually starts up and then stands in the background just waiting for queries it does nothing on its own uh, it's a service that is ready to receive comments and this command would be SQL comments usually so actually we already have this server so in general we need to have one database server installed and running in our system at the operating system level okay so if you are under Linux, it will be up to get up the, uh, install uh, MariaDB, for example, MariaDB server. And so that the server you install in the machine, it should be running. And at that point, uh, you should create an application that is able to communicate with an external process, exchange data, 
exchange commands so that you can actually insert data into this database or query data that was uh, previously inserted. So this is one, one uh, architecture. In this case, uh, <coughs> we can use, uh, well, we can use many different uh, databases, but usually what the, the ones that we are considering are mainly MySQL. Hmm? MySQL is an open source database. The MySQL project is now owned and managed by the Oracle Corporation. Hmm? Oracle also produces a very big and powerful database. It's an enter enterprise scale system that has a, uh, terribly big uh, minimum requirements and terribly high uh, fees for, for operating. But MySQL is the, the smallest one. It's open source. Uh, and uh, as we know, we, it runs as a, as a separate process. Uh, maybe we could also consider with more complex architectures the fact that the, our Python application is on a computer and the database server is on a different computer because that second computer may be as more memory, more disk space, is more uh, powerful, so it could be better to run the database uh, on a more powerful machine. Hmm? It will not be a big difference, just uh, uh, we need to connect them across the local network uh, instead of uh, uh, inside uh, uh, the same computer. Okay, so if you want to download uh, or install this one, the, the website uh, is uh, dev.mysql.com. Just uh, be careful because if you go to www.mysql.com, you will go to the commercial version and they will try to sell you hmm, the MySQL, say, enterprise version. If you go to dev, like developers, uh, you will find the community server. It's called the uh, uh, MySQL community server, uh, which is the open source version, actually. But uh, <clears throat> recently, um, there was, there's a new alternative, which is uh, nearly equivalent to, to MySQL, which is called uh, MariaDB, um, which is a, a fork of the MySQL server. So what happened? It's an open source project that is a separate version from the MySQL, which already was open source. So why did they do that? Actually, what happened is that people working as volunteers, as open source developers for MySQL, were not very happy when uh, the MySQL project was uh, acquired by Oracle Corporation. Because they said, okay, but you are making most of your money from a very big and large enterprise database. Uh, what is your interest, Oracle, to also invest uh, in a smaller and free product, uh, which in a, in a way is a competitor to your bigger uh, product. So they were not very confident that Oracle really wanted to improve uh, MySQL. So the original developers, uh, a small group of developers, st uh, stopped work the, working on the MySQL project and created a, a sister. So on day one, on the day number one of, the, of this fork, uh, the two projects were identical. So MariaDB was actually a clone of MySQL. From that day, they are starting to evolve separately. So people on MariaDB, now they don't have to report to Oracle anymore. If they want to make an improvement, they want to change something, they can do that on their own. On the other hand, uh, the MySQL version has a slower sort of slower pace of development uh, because uh, it has, this process has, has to be managed by the corporation. So what happens is that we have a database, which is also free. Uh, it's uh, practically 100% compatible with MySQL, so you can uh, exchange them in, with, 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 uh, without any, any problem. In some cases, it's faster, mm, faster because uh, uh, the, the development group uh, had the possibility and the chance of inserting new optimizations in the, in the query code. So actually, if you do some comparison, it's usually a bit ahead. It's not a, a real benchmark, but uh, the impression is that. And uh, most Linux distributions, if not all probably, now include uh, the, so the MariaDB uh, database. And also, this is also what I am here. Um, I install on this machine, on it's a window machine, I install MariaDB, but for compatibility, it's still called, uh, the service is still called MySQL. So you could see the MySQL server, is the name of the process, but actually, 
it's just the name that has been kept so that all the scripts uh, continue to work, uh, but the real package that, um, that has been installed is the MariaDB server. So this, this little confusion about what is installed on your, on your machine, but actually we don't care too much because uh, um, they are so, so much uh, compatible that they don't create any problem. But I when in doubt, uh, probably we are thinking about MariaDB. The good part of my why, why am I mentioning that? The good part about MySQL is that on the MySQL website, there are additional tools like graphical front-ends, uh, the MySQL Workbench, which is very, a very good tool for editing databases. Uh, there are some libraries. Uh, there is a very good documentation uh, because it's actually a commercial product. While the MariaDB is a bit more, you know, hobbyist uh, version, so the documentation is not so good and the graphical tools are not so good. Hmm? So, it, it, and we exploit the fact that they are totally compatible mm, to pick the best of, th of the two. But uh, <coughs> we also have an alternative, which is much simpler. Simpler in terms of uh, quicker to implement, uh, quicker to deploy, uh, and also less powerful, of course. And there's another way of uh, storing databases or managing databases uh, in Python, in another application, is uh, SQLite. SQLite uh, is a library. It's not a service. It's not an external process. It's not a separate program. It's just a library. So in Python, that would be a module that you, that you import. And it's part of your application, becomes part of your application. And this library actually is uh, the core of a database management system. So this library is able to interpreters, the SQL commands, and give you the impression that you are talking to a real database, uh, while actually you are just exploiting some commands in a library, and the content of the database uh, is stored uh, in a file, any, a normal file that you can put when you want, where you want. Hmm? So one of the differences is that uh, here you have a server which is already running, it's uh, at the system level, you need to have the credentials to talk to that server, and the, da the data that you insert uh, are managed directly by this DBMS, database management systems. So are stored uh, in a way that you, you don't know. You don't have control about how or where these files are stored. It's better because it's a more robust situation. If you want something simpler, you don't have to install anything at the system level, at the operating system level. You just need to use a library, a module, uh, in your Python application, and tell this module where to save a file. So all your database, it will be private to you, it will not be accessible, you don't need any password, you don't need to activate any services, anything, and you just have your data inside that file. So it's a different philosophy. But for example, if you have a small, uh, application and you want to save uh, the settings of the application or the user profile or some information it's very quick to implement that you don't need to to configure anything on the other hand if you have your application that you know reads and stores uh, and needs to query the sensor data then probably it's better to have a real database so that you can also query it from different programs one for testing one for one for uh, for the the sensor that push data into it, and the other for the web uh, interface that uh, creates the charts and the, and, the, and the output and so on. So you need something separate that keeps the data, and many applications will plug into that data, a, a full database. For small data, which is only needed locally by one application, this could be a very simple alternative. Hmm? So there are actually the two sides of the, of the same spectrum. They both let you store data, externally, external to your program. This data is uh, persistent, so that the content of the SQLite uh, database or the content of the MySQL managed uh, set of uh, files is there, is in, it's independent from, uh, from your Python program. Um, but the good part, uh, so uh, if, you have, if you want to have some more information about SQLite, it's here, we'll see that uh, later, which is the how to use that in Python, of course. <clears throat> so there are very two quite different words that feel different, fulfill different requirements, of course. Huh? They are 
solve for different types of application errors. But the good part is that uh, uh, there is one, uh, um, let's say, Python standard, which is uh, defined in the PP249. That's defined a sort of a general API for managing any kind uh, of database. So uh, the good news for us is that we can write Python code that uses this API calls, these functions, and is uh, sort of neutral with respect to the kind of backend that we have. So the same code, or nearly the same code, would be able to run against a MySQL database <coughs> or against a SQLite uh, library managed uh, uh, database file. Hmm? So when, you're, when we, are, we are not using a specific library for MySQL or a specific library for SQLite, uh, and so we need to uh, develop in a different way or write code in a different way. No, we are using the same uh, type of function, the same type of calls uh, that will get, get ex executed by different uh, types of, of databases. So this is good because we, we only have to learn the Python API for database. And then, depending on the module that we, we import, uh, these high-level calls will map to actual low-level uh, operations on the database. Hmm? So this is good for us. So what does this uh, API define? Oh, by the way, uh, an API is just uh, a document. It's a piece of text. It's, it's this one. It's not even a book. It's just uh, probably 10, 10 screenshots or something like that. Huh? So it's not a, a, a huge amount, uh, amount of text. But the PP249, Python Database API specification, is just a document. It's just a specification. For running something, you need to have some module that implements the specification. And so every database has uh, a specific module that you want to import in your application, and that module will offer, uh, will publish the same methods, the same functions as the other modules. So, for example, uh, in, the, um, in, our, in, the case, in the case of uh, MySQL or MariaDB, we need to import a con uh, MySQL, a connector module that implements uh, this specification. So this is the document, it's at the abstract specification, and we have a module, actually we have more than one, we can choose between more than one module. This module will be part of, of your Python application, so all of this, the Python application and the module will be together, and uh, the database server is separate, is installed at the, on the operating system. And the same goes for um, SQLite, uh, even if it's not uh, so much visible, because the SQLite library, the real SQLite library, is written in C, not in Python. Okay, for efficiency reasons. And so, for, uh, for uh, accessing the functions of this library, we need a, a small Python module that translates the Python calls, Python calls into the C uh, functions offered by the library itself, by the real SQLite library. And so we will need to import uh, a SQLite module. So we import a different module in Python, and then we use the same high-level calls in both cases. So this is the sort of a general picture. Uh, next week, so today we learned how to use the database from a simple independent command line application. Next week we we'll start uh, uh, web applications. So. Uh, that will come uh, in, in the second hour, the, the first introduction to web applications, where we see that every web application always needs a, a database backend. So we'll, need the, we'll learn the Flask library for building web applications, and everything we learn today will be also useful, of course, uh, for uh, databases that power, empower the web application. Okay, the Mar uh, MariaDB and the SQLite are not the only databases. You can have separate one, different ones. For example, Postgres is also a very famous, very popular. It's also an open source uh, uh, database, which is usually more powerful and more standard than uh, MySQL. And it's also used uh, probably more complex applications in the, in the open source. Uh, uh, it's less popular because probably it's a bit more complex uh, or a bit more picky about the syntax. Uh, Mm, MySQL is lighter in, in a way, but you can also consider that it's very popular in the open source world. 
what we are not considering here and what is not covered by the PP249 are the so-called uh, non-relational databases or the NoSQL databases, uh, MongoDB or something like that, as you probably heard is uh, mentioning, which are object databases or graph-oriented databases uh, that don't follow the SQL language, don't implement a SQL interface, don't implement a, a relational model. And so the PP249 is not applicable to those, that kind uh, of databases and to those uh, implementations. And so you, you will need uh, a different approach. Hmm? In this course, we don't have so much, so much data, uh, so many items, so many rows, and so on. So we don't need uh, to go to this full-scale non-relational databases. So they invented non-relational databases because when you have too much data, uh, SQL becomes too slow. And so you need some database which is faster with, you, with huge amount of data because it doesn't do too many checks, because it's not relational. It doesn't check all the... Uh, integrity constraints, uh, all the foreign keys, and something like all the stuff that a relational database is good for. Huh? And uh, but this uh, is a line what we don't need to go in this course because we won't have, uh, we will never have in our project so much data. Huh? Okay, so let's dive into the 249 PP, so the database specification API. Uh, the PI. As I said, the API is just a specification. Then you will need to find a module that, imp that implements that specification for your specific database. Hmm? So what does it say? Okay, it defines uh, a couple of, obje of main objects, Python objects. And with these objects, you can do or you can interact with the database. The two main objects are connection and cursor. Connection is an object that is able to manage, as the name says, the connection with the database. So we have, imagine the MySQL case. You have your Python application, you have your MySQL server, you need in some way to make them exchange data. You need to create a connection between the two so that they can exchange information. So the connection object is a Python object that, is, that manages this connection, this pipe. I visualize that as a pipe uh, where you can send information through. And it goes from the, your application to the database. Usually the queries go from your, inf uh, from your application to the database. And the results of the query travel back in the, opposite, uh, in the opposite direction from the database to your application. Okay, so this is the first object. Which, uh, it's a basic object, it's just uh, the way, the channel, the pipe through which uh, our program will speak to the database. And uh, if, if the connection is a pipe or a channel, the cursor is, um, is a shuttle. Uh, it's a shuttle which is able to travel back and forth ex or host messages that you can send over the connection to the database and the database can return to you over the same connection. So you have one connection and you send over this connection cursor. A cursor is a, an object that contains a query, actually. We'll see why it's called a cursor, it's not a query or not a statement. Hmm? Um, and so the connection object is able to create many shuttles, many <laughs> cursors for you, and every cursor will uh, be used uh, for executing one different query. And the cursor is bound to the, to the connection that generated it uh, and is able to host uh, results uh, connected to that uh, uh, query. And in particular, the cursor has two main meta methods. Uh, one uh, is execute and the others are fetch methods. And uh, as a shuttle, first you need to send the query to the server for executing it. So you, exec you ask the cursor to execute the query. So please, cursor, go to the database and execute this query. And uh, the, the way back, in the way back, you ask the cursor to fetch the results uh, that the database computed for you, but then you need them in your Python application. Okay, so these are the general concepts. In practice, 
in practice for um, interfacing with a database you need uh, you always need the sort of five steps or six I would say five because the sixth one is just returning the result hmm? so we'll now we'll uh, we'll have a look uh, uh, in detail at each of these steps uh, to understand hmm? but first of all don't read the details yet but what you see is that we have a, a SQL statement that we want to execute on a given database you create a connection to a database uh, with some credential from the connection you get a cursor and you ask the cursor to execute the SQL statement after that uh, you need uh, to ask the cursor to fetch the results of the execution of that query These are the steps. Every time you need to make a query, first open a connection, then get a cursor, then execute the query, and finally fi fetch the result. Not finally. Finally, free the resources. Close the connection. So that the database knows that you no longer need that connection, you no longer need it, you no longer need the database to store all the results of the query that you ran a uh, moment ago. So that you can free the resources in the database memory. Okay, but let's go into this in detail. Okay, so actually, the only two um, intelligent parts are the query and what I do with the result. All the rest is just uh, syntax, so it's just uh, a template that we have to follow. Okay. So basically, I want to do something with the result of a query. So first, I, ne I need to be able to write a correct query. And second, uh, once I have the results, uh, what can I do with them? So one step at a time. Let's assume that we know the query that we want to run. Step number two is uh, opening a connection. Of course, opening a connection to MySQL will be different from opening a connection to SQLite. Why? Because uh, uh, for opening a connection to MySQL, I need to provide, for example, the host in which the, ser the MySQL server is running, and the credential, user and password, for example, that I will need to authenticate that server. On a, if I only want to connect to MySQL, sorry, to SQLite, uh, the only parameter that I need is the location of the file where the database is stored. I don't need any password, any... If I can read the file, then I have uh, access to the database. So, and this is true in general. Any database, any module that implements the PEP249 will define a connect method specific to that database with different parameters. So, you are sure that the connection string, the connection statement, will be different depending on the database. So this one will be different. If we are careful, most of the rest will not be different, or will be more or less identical. Okay, so we get a connection with a connect method. So mysql.connector is the name of a package. In the case of SQLite, will be sqlite.connect, and so on. We see different um, modules that implement this API, but the, the call will also be connect. And the parameters of this call depend on, we need to, ch to check the documentation of the specific module for <coughs> the connect method. Okay, if this doesn't fail, so it may fail because maybe the password is wrong or the database is not active or we don't have network connectivity or 20,000 of the different reasons, or we don't have the permission to open the file, and so on. So every time we use a database or as any external resource, uh, there's always the, cha the chance that something goes wrong, always. Hmm? It's not like uh, doing 3 plus 2 or doing some computation internal to our program where if I don't have any bugs, uh, it will run. Here, it should be bug-free, and also the external resources, in this case the database, should be available and uh, reachable and, and and so on 
okay so once we have the connection if we get the connection we can start uh, defining and running the query for defining the query uh, the query is actually just a string so I want to query this table I don't know ID original modify it's an exercise that we'll say later and that we'll use this uh, that with simple database so it's a select of some columns from some table okay you just write it as a string but very often the queries that we we need to run on the database depend on some input coming from the user for example i want to in the to-do list uh, the user wants to see item number three which is the third item so the user enters with his holy fingers enters number three so we have this number three in a variable in python but this number should be inside a where statement in the query so somewhere you should have a query select uh, um, to do where id equal to three so we have some sometimes or very often the need to embed into the query some parameter coming from the user or coming from the algorithm that knows uh, what to query so in some cases the queries that we need to run are parametric contain some parameters so uh, in this case the location of the parameters can be identified by using some special placeholders so in this case it means that uh, uh, you have an instance statement with two parameters and these parameters are to be inserted here and there so this query is not a complete query It's not a complete full correct uh, SQL statement it's just a template of a statement and the template must be finalized by inserting actual values instead of the placeholders so before executing this query we should provide a value for the first parameter and another value for the second parameter right so if we have a query which doesn't contain any param parameter you just need to write a string that's it if you have a parametric query so a, a query where you need to change some variables because they, they depend on the data on what the program is doing or depend on, on the data that the user has inserted so you have a string uh, that comes from the user so a new to do uh, in your to-do list so you have the string that you read from the user you must insert this string into the database a new row and how can you do that of course it's a uh, uh, the value of the insert statement uh, should come from an external variable so in this case use a placeholder and then i'll show you how to uh, give the actual value of the placeholder when you run the query why did i put two lines here well <coughs> because uh, pp249 was a bit late so the standard for python uh, database access came <laughs> at a later time later than the implementation of some of these modules and so different modules developers already started to provide some inter some database interface uh, by using different types of placeholders so actually if you read the pp it tells you that you may have five different types of placeholders depending on the implementation of the module it's hell but um, they couldn't standardize on which one so there could be a placeholder percent f or a placeholder question mark or there's a placeholder also column number column one column two column three column four or another one which is also percent, percent parenthesis name of the parameter s outside the parameter uh, so there are five different uh, versions 
and you need to know which version your module implements i listed these two because this the, uh, these are the one implemented by mysql and the second is implemented by sqlite so actually when you have a parametric query you need to change the form of the placeholder depending on the backend that you have the concept is, is the same the working is the same is that the character that you use uh, to be different so if you are using mysql use percent s if you are using sqlite use question mark i hate it too but uh, um, you say but i don't want to use placeholders why do i need that i could also just uh, insert into translation original values uh, and then close the quotation mark close the string plus the value coming from the user why can't i do just string concatenation for creating the the, the query hmm? you may be tempted to construct the query by concatenating fragments of strings don't do that ever okay it's a very big uh, security problem you can never trust some information that comes from the user and put and use that information to construct a string which is sent to a database with the credential of your application if you are not careful you risk uh, of uh, enabling an, a hacker user to execute arbitrary SQL code onto your database. Okay? Um, you're not convinced. Uh, we'll see that uh, when we write some code. Okay? For now, you have the placeholder mechanism use it always never sql strings should always start with opening a quote and closing a quote and nothing in between no concatenation no operation no variables no, in, no interpolation and so on okay as much as possible um, and so how do we interpolate uh, okay with um, it's again uh, uh, tells you that person test is for mydb and the question mark is for sqlite another strange thing is that uh, okay percent s uh, reminds me of the format method okay so you have a string dot format and you provide the parameters uh, and it's handy for formatting python strings it's not it's a normal python method okay format string dot format and in and in the f in python format function you specify the type of the variable so percent h s is for printing a string or for formatting a string percent d or i is for an integer percent f is for a floating point number and so on so the syntax is similar but actually in sql in my um, in my sql you always use percent s s doesn't mean string it means uh, something i don't know uh, and so even if uh, you want to put a number here it will not be percent d it will always be percent s or it's a floating point number it's not percent f but it's always percent s s it's part of the name hmm? it doesn't mean anything you know it's a stupid choice but okay so we define the string we connect it to the database and these are two separate independent information independent uh, operations and uh, we said we need a connection for running the query we say that the, the connect uh, connect method is implementation dependent so so far we have two things to care about the, the placeholder percent s or question mark and the formula connect method these these two will mark the difference between mysql and uh, sqlite and uh, after step two uh, step two you have step five you know where did three and four go uh, they will come but uh, uh, first of all remember that when you are opening a connection you are not just doing something on your side of, pro of, pro of the program on your python application 
you are creating a link with an external service, a database, that will reserve some of its resources to you. So when you open a connection, the database will open some data structure, will be ready for you, and so on. And whenever you execute a query on the database, the database will use some memory, some space, some disk space for storing the results of your query. So it's a good uh, thing to do, it's the right thing to do, is to tell the database, uh, thank you, I don't need you anymore. So the resources that have been used are not needed anymore right now, so dear database, you can free these resources and use them from other clients, for, um, from other, for other applications. So always remember to close the connection after you open it. If you forget to close the connection, and especially when, when, when you're developing, uh, you will make many queries, so will happen, you will open many, many connections, and you run the program again and again and again. If you forget to close them, it's very easy to end up with uh, thousands of open connections. Connections that have been opened and uh, haven't been closed. So what happens on the database side? First, the database will drop the connection if it sees that it's inactive for 20 minutes, half an hour maybe. So there is a timeout on the database that sooner or later will drop the connection if you don't close it in, uh, explicitly. But meanwhile, so before the timeout uh, expires, you have uh, um, a lot of open connections. They are idle, but they are open. And the database configuration files, files uh, states the maximum number of open connections. This number is usually high, so hundreds or a thousand. But if you leave many open connections, it comes a time where your program cannot open anymore any further connection because all the connection capability from the database is already sucked up by the, um, by, it's already exhausted by the uh, idle connection from previous executions of the program. So it's really important to close the connection, otherwise uh, after a while your program will not work. So it's worked for the fi first five, ten minutes, and then it stops working, it starts uh, creating database errors. I can have a guess uh, at what's happening. Okay, so that's why step five is immediately after step two. Take the habit, when you write connect, uh, immediately write close. And then you insert statements in between. Be but uh, because otherwise you can uh, write statement A and they can ensure you that you will forget to close it at the end. Hmm? So like opening and closing uh, a parenthesis, you open and close the connection immediately. Write the closing statement in the same time in which you write the opening. Okay, but so in between, we do all the work. And doing the work is easy. It just uh, means asking the connection for a cursor Please give me a cursor. It's just a simple call like that. And uh, asking the cursor to execute a statement. That's it. The statement can be fixed or parametric. If the statement doesn't have any parameter, this one is enough. Cursor.execute query. If the cursor Sorry, if the query contains placeholders, so needs parameters to replace the actual value of the placeholders, you just add the placeholders as a second parameter of the, the, of the execute method. So you execute, giving the SQL template, so a string containing placeholders, and the tuple with the values of the parameters. Be careful with the Python syntax. These are not one, two, three parameters. They are two parameters to the execute call. The first is the, is the SQL template, string, and the second is one only parameter, which is a Python tuple, containing as many elements uh, as many placeholders need to be filled. So this is, I repeat, it's not one parameter, second, third parameter to the execute call. The execute only has two arguments, the query string template and the tuple of the, with the argument value. 
So by setting a tuple, you use the parentheses syntax in Python, right? Like uh, if it was a set, you would use the braces, the curly braces. If it was a list, you would use the square brackets. And if it's a tuple, you use the um, round uh, parentheses. That's all. If you only have one parameter, maybe you only have one placeholder, you still have to create a tuple with one element. It's not enough to do to put it into parentheses because otherwise the parentheses will be interpreted in the arithmetic sense. You need to <laughs> teach the Python interpreter that these parentheses are needed for creating a tuple with only one element. And so one, sh one trick uh, is always use a trailing comma here. So that the, part, the Python part says, okay, say, okay, I need to create a tuple and it only contains one element. If you forget that, uh, you will get an error because the execute method uh, is expecting a tuple, a tuple of, as a second argument and instead it's getting an, a number of a string or a, or a value. Hmm? So it's a uh, small pitfall. If you want to be explicit, uh, you can also use the tuple constructor. So writing tuple, parentheses, and the number. Hmm? But like this is faster. Just don't forget this comma. Okay. So that's the syntax. What happens when I execute uh, a query? Well, the cursor shuttle goes from your Python application to the database. The database interprets the SQL template, so it understands what kind of statement you want to execute in SQL. It fills the statement with the parameter values at the database side. We are not doing string concatenation on the Python side. And then we'll run the optimizer and run the query and prepare a table with the results of your query. You know that every selector in SQL generates a new table, a table of the columns and rows of results. And this query is uh, still on the database server after the execute method. So the results are there, are ready, but we need to pull them back to the Python program. And uh, for pulling the results back to the Python program, we use the fetch methods of cursor. So the cursor method can retrieve the uh, all the results at the same time, so all the table with this uh, fetch all method, or one row at a time, only the first row, then the second one, the third one, if we don't need to read them all at the same time, and you only need to read one at a time and then process each of them in a loop, for example. And so we'll have the fetch one method. So the cursor has a, a set of methods that are used for, okay, the link is wrong, but I already opened it before, so now, Cursor methods are here. Hmm. There's the execute method, oh, and then fetch one, fetch many, or fetch all. Actually, they are the, the three methods of cursor for extracting information. No? Fetch one, fetch many, ten, or fetch all, all they are. Hmm. And uh, what do these fetch methods do? They retrieve one row or a set of rows, and every row is uh, packed uh, into a Python tuple again. So if your result table is, is uh, 50 rows and three columns, the fetch one will uh, return a tuple with three elements. The first will be the first column, the second will be the second column, and so on. And so you get these methods no, I don't have the example. I will write it there. Uh, we will extract this information and use that in our Python program for fetch one. If you are calling fetch all or fetch many, you will get back a list, a sequence of uh, tuples. Se sequence, square brackets, list of tuples, round parentheses. Hmm? Because you have many rows, so every row is a tuple. And the many rows are put into a list or sequence. You know that list and sequence in Python are equivalent uh, definitions. Okay? And so 
you have in your Python code the data corresponding to the result of the query. Um, this uh, is for queries where you only need to get results from the database. So if your query is a select statement, that's all. A select statement will create a table of results uh, and you need to get the results back. But uh, select is not the only SQL statement that you can run. You could also have insert or update statements that don't generate results. They just modify the data. So uh, you don't have to fetch anything back, but for statements that need to change data, you need to call an additional method which is called commit. So for a select you do execute, fetch. For an insert you will do execute, commit. Because you could execute uh, many different queries and then commit only once at the end that will make the changes permanent into the database. Until you call commit, the changes are not saved into the database. Database just files them up, makes a list of the changes, but doesn't do them really, okay? So uh, it's always a two-step uh, solution, a two-step procedure. Execute, fetch all, or for select, or uh, execute and then commit for insert or update statements. I don't mention delete because I don't want to think about anything that is called delete, okay? We never delete anything. There's no reason to use delete, okay? So it doesn't exist for me. Never delete any data. Uh, as a philosophy, of course. My religion is never delete. Okay, then we know we have the clean, the clean up phase. So we already got our data or we committed our changes. And so we can close the cursor and later, 5A, close the cursor, and later close the connection point, step 5B, we already uh, mentioned that at the beginning, so that we free the resources. We tell the database we don't need any more the results of the query, con cursor or close, and we don't need to run any additional query later on, connection to close. And at that point, at this point, you, we already have the data that comes from the database into our Python objects and we can do whatever we want. It depends on the Python application, or what, on what the Python application needs to do. If we need uh, to make additional queries, you can create new cursors over the same connection. So you don't need to open many connections if you want to make many queries. A connection is just one, is the pipe, and you need many shuttles that go around this pipe, around this channel, um, one for each query. So you can create many cursors on the same connection. You can only use one connection for the whole program and then close it when the program ends and use many, as many cursors, so as many statements, queries as you want hmm, on that. So you just need to go back to step three, which was create a cur the cursor. You don't need to go back to step uh, two that was opening the connection. Hmm? Okay, so in practice, if we want to do a small example uh, by querying, creating a query database, uh, what should we do? Well, first of all, if uh, we use MySQL, we need to have MySQL or already be installed uh, in, the, um, in the lab. You already have MariaDB installed, and you, we will give you the password for opening a database there, um, which is different from the one that I have on this PC. Uh, if you install that on your own, uh, during the installation procedure, it will ask you for the root password of the database uh, uh, so that you can choose the password for we, that, we will, that you will use later to connect. For connecting to MySQL or MariaDB, it's the same you need, uh, or we need, a Python module. So we need to install the database and also to use a Python module for, for creating connections and cursors. There are two possibilities, two alternatives. One is using the official connector, or the official MySQL connector by Oracle. 
So you download it from the Oracle website and it will install, uh, this is a small installer that will install the, the, the Python modules. Uh, it will provide a package that is called mysql.connector. It's a Python package. It's called, uh, by, uh, Oracle calls it MySQL connector for Python. Mm -hmm. There's a page with a, a long list of connectors. There will be a connector for C, for Java, for C Sharp, for uh, uh, PHP, and so on. Uh, we need the, uh, the connector for Python. An alternative, which is simpler, is, an, uh, is um, a pure Python implementation. So this one is actually a, mo a binary module that with a Python interface. It's more efficient, it's official, it's well documented, it's guaranteed to work, but it's a bit, uh, no, it's not so easy, to, well, it's not, uh, well, you can use that, it's not, it's not a problem, but you need to be installed separately. It, it, it does, it's not in the Ubuntu repositories. It's not in the pip repositories, because it's a, a proprietary product. So you need to install separately with its own installer, with its own install instruction. It doesn't update automatically and so on. If you want to be something which is more integrated in the Python eco ecosystem, you can use this uh, PyMySQL, which is one developer that just studied the MySQL protocol, low-level protocol, and implemented in Python a way to communicate with that. And Actually, it tried to implement the exactly same interface uh, of uh, the official MySQL connector. So you can use them in the same way. For this, you just uh, need to install that with, uh, with pip install MySQL. Hmm? And we provide a package that is called pi MySQL. So one of the two, either MySQL connector or pi MySQL, they will do the same. Uh, okay, but uh, the nice part is that if you, know, if you need to know something about all the parameters, the configuration, the connection parameters, and so on, uh, PyMySQL doesn't have any documentation at all. It's terrible. It doesn't tell you anything. You should go always to the MySQL official connector guide, and you get that there's a very long manual with all the information, with all the settings. So if you, even if you, you use PyMySQL for documentation, always go to the MySQL website. Um, OK, so if you are using MySQL, the connection line, you remember, step two connection, opening the connection is different, no, depending on the database. Uh, it's just uh, this, import MySQL.connector, and connection is mysql.connect, which is the name of the package, dot .connect, which is the name of the method, and the set of parameters. These parameters, usually the minimum set of parameters that you have to provide are the user, password for authenticating, the database that you want to open, because the, sa the same MySQL implementation may have uh, different databases, in and the host on which the database is running. Usually that would be localhost. Uh, at this string, uh, you can find all the additional parameters. There are two, two pages full of additional parameters if you want to see the strange thing that you can do when opening a connection. Or there is also a, an, another syntax. The connect method may also get a dictionary. Now this is a, uh, I don't know if you already saw it. It's a Python syntax for expanding a dictionary. So you can define a dictionary of parameters the same parameters as before, and then in the call, uh, in the connect uh, statement, you just uh, uh, pass the dictionary with these two asterisks say, saying connect the parameters to arguments. Hmm. I find it probably more readable like this by defining the parameters and then making a call in one line so that this can also be put in, in a separate place in the code rather than polluting the code with all the list of parameters. But it's just a question of your preference. Okay, the other one is the same, behaves exactly in the same way. Uh, the difference is that you import PyMySQL, and therefore you will call PyMySQL.connect instead of MySQL.connector.connect. Same connection parameters, same placeholders, and so on. Hmm? We will use this one because it's simpler to, to install. Okay, 
let's make an example with this and then we will move to uh, SQLite hmm? so what can we do we can do a simple example I already have PyCharm open uh, I, I, I created a project called the Python database or oh, let me make a, a simple database that we can imagine for hosting our to-do list okay so how do we create a database we know that MariaDB is running on this computer yes it is so how to open it how to see the database hmm? well actually a database is just a back-end service it doesn't have any user interface the user interface are SQL commands so we should open a terminal and start writing SQL commands for creating tables and so on creating indexes and so on raise your hand if you remember the syntax for create table huh? okay good never nobody should remember that um, and uh, fortunately PyCharm does contain a small front-end for databases if you go to this strange icon there sorry it will open Why is that? Come on. Okay. Uh, a set of uh, possible extensions or windows. One of that uh, should be database. Why I don't see it? It was there before. Why is that? Tools. database is here okay because I already opened it before so okay then it didn't show up okay so if you go here you can open a database window in PyCharm it's not related to the project that you have opened okay it's not you didn't create any code in Python yet but first of all we need to create a database where we want to store our data our to-do list so first of all we can create a data source the data source is uh, the Java language, let's say the, Py, the PyCharm language for type of database. We want to create a new database in MySQL. You don't see MariaDB here. We use MySQL, it's the same. And at that point, we are creating a new data source for a MySQL database running on localhost. Usually, uh, look here, PyCharm will ask you to, to download some driver files, uh, some missing files that PyCharm needs uh, to interact with MySQL. Hmm? It's Java stuff inside PyCharm. Don't, we don't care about that. Just click uh, on it uh, and you'll be happy. And then we need to provide the credentials for this connection. Okay, it's good. So right now, what, what I specified, a data source, a connection that PyCharm will use to connect to MySQL, to my RDB. Okay? Nothing to do with Python right now. Okay? When I add this, it's called localhost, okay? It contains a lot of useless information. But we can create uh, a new database. Uh, sorry, I forgot to. No, I had to, sorry, I had to select database before here. Yeah. Uh, to do list. Okay. Okay. So we create uh, a new connection called to do list at localhost okay and in this one we can create tables so to do list localhost uh, okay sorry forget the new Let's do that. Create. 
database to do this. We have, sorry, just to, to make it short. On the right, you have a browser, all the different databases, tables, and so on, of columns. And on the left, you have a, an editor for writing SQL queries. And you have the run button that would run the query on the database. So using the main uh, uh, access to the database, I create a database to-do list so that th at this point uh, I should be able in to-do list, uh, what is that, to create uh, click on next, uh, new table, okay. Hmm? So once I've created the database, I show it again. New table, creates a new table inside this database. So we have a table uh, to do that has, uh, for example, three columns. Uh, the first one is an ID. The second one is a description. And the third one could be a deadline. And of course, uh, the ID is an integral number that we will use a as a primary key, self-incrementing. The description will be a text, so it's not an integer, but a bar char of uh, 200 char characters, not null. And the deadline would be a date. Maybe null because maybe we don't have the deadline for some uh, tasks. Okay, so with this small uh, editor window, we can define the name of a table and the columns uh, of that table. Actually, what happens th is that uh, we are graphically editing a SQL statement. Because what we are editing here is just used uh, for creating this SQL statement there, down there, that is shown here, and it shows the SQL syntax for doing exactly that. And for doing that, for actually creating the table, we must execute this statement. Okay, so when you execute the statement, you see that in the to-do list database, you have a new table called to-do, and this table contains one, two, three columns, and one index. The index is linked to the primary key. And on this table, you can execute query. You can write SQL code here. You can select uh, select all from to do don't expect many results here you will only get one table at the bottom here with three columns and zero rows as expected the query is correct the table is there but there are no data yet okay so you, we could try to insert some data in Python. Hmm? So right now we have the, an empty database ready to be used. Okay? So let's go back to, the, to Python. And let's create a new Python file uh, let's call it test uh, mysql dot py test mysql dot py we want to use it to insert uh, a new to do statement okay so how to do that uh, I would like to insert for example let's try it for first I want to run a statement like insert into to do description data uh, the values uh, do this and the date is uh, today 
Is that a SQL function? No. Now. For example, a query like this. Uh, now the deadline should, should not be now, okay, should some 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 day in the future, sorry. So it would be 12, 2017 zero four zero one, the first of April. This is the kind of query that we want to execute. If we run it, okay, it's not called date. It's always better to write the query first in an inter interactive way before putting that into our Python code so that we can debug the SQL syntax before caring about, uh, so I, for example, it's not that, it was deadline. And uh, run here. Okay, and no column there. Insert to do, values. Okay, one row affected. The table now contains one row. ID one, description, do this, deadline, first of April. Okay, but this is easy. We just use PyCharm to insert a SQL statement. We want to do the same from, my, from SQL, from Python, sorry. So we need to import the PyMySQL library is not installed here. We can try to install it directly from PyCharm. If it doesn't work, go to the terminal and write pip install PyMySQL. In this case, uh, today we are lucky. There's no proxy issues. Um, okay, so we have this uh, and uh, In our main, uh, in our main code, what do we have to do? We have to um, open a connection with the by MySQL dot connect by passing the credentials for connecting to the database. And these credentials are uh, user, the password, the database, It's called database, right? Let me check. Database, yes. Is to do list. And uh, finally, uh, the host is localhost. So we create this connection, and on the connection we would like to run an insert statement. So as the SQL statement for the insert is uh, this one. Let's copy it, put it into a Python string. Suggestion is to use the single quotes for SQL strings and the double string, the double quotes for Python, so you don't get too much confusion. But actually, we don't want to embed a special string here. We need to have a placeholder for the description and a placeholder for the date. And in general, the description, the my description, would be be happy and uh, my date would be uh, 2017-0405, for example. Okay, imagine that these data are coming from the user, from the user interface and so on, whatever. Hmm? Now, 
we can execute the statement so create the cursor is a connection dot cursor and cursor dot execute what the SQL statement with the, the parameters that are for the first placeholder my description for the second placeholder my date and immediately after commit the cursor and close This for inserting new data. But now we, we, we want to be sure that the data actually was inserted correctly. So we could run a second query onto the same database for retrieving this data, right? We could see it in the Python console, in the PyCharm console, but it's better to have the program printed out. So the second query would be a more simple one, SQL 2. A simpler query is select uh, uh, description from, okay, that's also the deadline, right? Uh, the deadline from to do. So we want also to see that. And so we create a second uh, cursor. from the same connection and on this second cursor we execute the second statement and we then retrieve the data corresponding to this select is that a question Work connection commit, uh, then my fault. Yeah. Right, thank you. No, I'm not this one. Thank you. And now we need to execute the query and get the result. So result is a cursor dot cursor, sorry, cursor two, because cursor one is dead dot uh, fetch all for example because it's easy and then we can print uh, result 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 uh, to see what happened so what do we expect to, to see probably an, an error i don't know but uh, uh, if we don't have any errors here it should print uh, in, the, in the result two items a list of two items. The one is already there that do this, and the second one is the one that we just inserted. Also remember to close the connection. Okay, let's try it. Cross your finger. Okay, we are lucky. So we have a list of two elements. The first one is a tuple containing do this, and this date and the second be happy and this date this is the low level representation of the object of course hmm? if you want uh, you can with this uh, well right now we are we already are in, in normal python code so you have this uh, result you can iterate it with a four uh, uh, for each row and for each row you can get the the, the columns and so on uh, for example after the close, you can do four uh, row in result. You can print uh, maybe only the first one, row zero. The, no, you have a, a, a two levels of nesting the first one are the rows and for every row you have a, an array a list with the columns so zero will be the first column one will be the second one and so on 
so in this case uh, it would print uh, one, two, three, of course, be happy, it's printed twice because we inserted another one when we, we run the code again. Okay, so that's for the MySQL. The SQL, the SQLite version would be practically the same. The only difference that you need to import a, a package which is called SQLite 3 instead of the PyMySQL, so you change this import here. And in the creation, the connection, you need to provide the name of a file. Instead of all, all these parameters are not used, just the name of a file. And then remember to change the placeholder from percentage to question mark. Hmm? So we, our time is over, but you can, I will commit this onto GitHub and you can try to play uh, on, the SQL, on the SQLite version by modifying this one. Okay, thank you.